Good morning, YouTube. It's Sunday. It's early. So it's the early morning Sunday show. Welcome back. In the background today, we are playing the Stylistics. Ta-da! The Stylistics. I hated this group growing up in the 70s. I mean, it was just like, oh my god, the syrupy stuff, the strings, and all this... And as we grow older, we learn things change, and suddenly things that you once did not like, you now love. And I've become a real big fan of the stylistics. Uh, brings back good memories, and I, 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 I like the music. So that's what we got going on in the background today. So for those of you that aren't into that nice 70s soul, sorry about that. I uh, finished a book this week. We'll just quickly talk about that. Elvis Costello, Unfaithful Music, finally got that thing read. I bought it a year ago, just I have that big a stack of books I'm reading. I try to get a book a week done, but it's been a lot slower lately. I don't know, I right, $6.98 at Half Price Bookstore. Neat book, you know, it's an autobiography, so if you want to find out about the dirt on Elvis, what his family is like, what are his kids doing, you're not going to find it in here. It's more about him, his music, uh, inspiration for the music, how the band went, uh, a lot about his parents. It was an interesting read. Did enjoy it. Elvis Costello fans, I hope you've read it. If not, get on it. Really good. A lot of vinyl tag videos out there. I've tried to watch as almost every single one of them. If I find them, I try to watch them. Uh, you know, here's, I want a couple shout outs. A couple people that I've watched, it was their very first video, and I just want to call them out. Irving Park Vinyl Review. He's out of Chicago, Irving Park. Uh, Irving Park Vinyl Review. He did his very first one. And Vinyl in My Vein. Vinyl in My Vein. He has eight subscribers right now. He just did his very first video, so that was neat. Uh, you know, a couple other ones that you know don't have a lot of subscribers, but they've been doing these vinyl tags was Cosmic Vinyl and Chad's Music Stuff. So I wanted to make sure I kind of mentioned those guys. Uh, you know, congrats on doing this. Uh, the other thing I wanted to really call out, Bad English Rex, Mr. Finglish. He did a a um, contest video for Greg Short. Greg Short has this contest where you kind of make a story of a band or whatever. Bad English Rex, Mr. Finglish, put hours into his. I mean, he made this documentary that's mind-blowing. It is so, I mean, it's actually really neat. You swear to God, it's the real thing. I mean, what he did with editing was really fantastic. So if you haven't looked at it, take a look at it. I mean, he put a lot of work into this thing, and it's, it's really well worth looking at. So, all right, that's my, um, what I wanted to call out this week. So, let's get going here, all right? I've been trying to get this record album from Amazon. It's uh, from R.L. Burnside. It's called Call Me Jim. I ordered this album back in December. It comes outside. I get an album from Amazon. It says Call Me Jim. All right, hey, I'm finally going to get it. Open it up. I get shovels and ropes. And this is predecessors. Well, that's not what I ordered. Don't mind shovels and rope, but I didn't order this. So I sent it. You know, got to send this back. All right, that's fine. A week later, I get my uh, thing from Amazon. Call me Jim's on there. All right, all right, I finally got my album. Open it up. I get trampled by turtles. Well, I didn't order trampled by turtles. I have this in CD. It's not a bad album, but it's not Call Me Jim. So I go on Amazon. Got the wrong thing. Okay, send it back. We're gonna send you. Um, I'll call Call Me Jim. All right, all right. A week later, which was when I came home this week. There's an album, it says, call me Jim, Al, or Al Burnside, open it up. I got Linda Ronstadt, living in the USA. So, here comes the point is, do I just say, I'll never get this R.L. Burnside, and so you just screw it all, because that's three now? I mean, <laughs> what the hell? I mean, at least it's not even the same thing. It's just like, hey, I don't know, just give him one of them. All right, he'll never notice. 
I'm going to do it again just because I am so curious. I just want to know, what are they going to send me next? I mean, how could you not want to know this? What's And eventually they're going to send me something that's going to be so outstandingly good that I make such a great deal on it. I just thought, nah, that's fine. I'll just keep it. So, all right. I still don't have my R.L. Burnside album, but I got three others, but they got to go back. Uh, one more thing, you know, last week, I appreciate, and I can't tell you how much I just die laughing when you, um, I get comments, and a lot of you guys comment a lot, I, thank you so much, but you know, Steve, you mispronounced this. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, me, Miss Franz. I was not good at hooked on phonics. Still don't get the damn thing. But this one, I swear to God, this one wasn't my fault. So I talked about this album. All right, I just, let's look at this. G R I S. Gr is. Gr is. Right? Right? It's pronounced gree gree. That's what I mean. Everyone's, it's pronounced gree gree. Does anybody see a double E there? I mean, I'm pretty sure E is an E and E. Even to have the E sound, you have to have an E in the word. Where the hell do you come up with Gree Gree? This is Chris Chris. I trust everyone, believe me. If someone says I'm mispronouncing wrong, I absolutely believe them. I would never believe me. Not in a million years, but. Gree, gree, give me a break on this one. How the hell was I supposed to know that? Yeah, you know, it's like a silent K. Why? Why? No. There's a K in front of it. Why? Just, I don't get it. And I don't get gree, gree. But I thank everybody for telling me that. Put it out. I really, I just, it cracks me up. <laughs> hey, Steve, you did that one wrong. Hey. <laughs> so, thanks. All right. Now, now we'll go into some new music. I've shown this one first album before, but it kind of, it's its my segue, all right? And this was the very first record album I ever bought with my own money, a full album. I was living in Central City, Nebraska. You know, it's a, one of those towns of 2,000 people, but we had a big grain elevator, which made us a big deal. Go Bison. All right, so I went in and I bought this. Um, and it was a compilation and it was at the a clothing store but they had like this box of um, you know they, they, they sold just a little bit of music they had like a box of some 45s and when KTEL would put something out they'd get in this display box of KTEL so I bought this and you know you could see here we had the Beatles, Melanie, BJ Thomas, Jimi Hendrix, Tea Garden and Van Winkle whatever that is Neil Diamond but wait right here was the Crazy Elephants and this was my favorite song and I memorized this song and I sang this song and I enjoyed it so very very much <sighs> and but I've never found it and I've looked and I just I kind of just felt it must be only be a 45 and for years and years I mean I've been looking for it this year I just go in C for crazy right I don't think C's uh, you know I think that's actual the letter on there could never find it and Dylan uh, he had this contest and he had some additional winners and I was one of them and I really appreciate it and he sent it there was the crazy elephants the crazy elephants isn't that just the neatest thing and uh, what the you know I snuck down here this morning I was so Quiet. He was sacked out on the bed. I mean, absolutely sacked out. Here he goes. Here he goes. Why? And all right. But so he sent me this. So this was great. Quit it. And um, what was neat was, you know, they take this. This was a studio band. They made. They saw. So this was a concoction. Uh, um, some studio execs to make kind of like an American bubblegum pop type thing, though it's it's rockier than that. I mean, they they take they steal riffs from the Temptations, from the Doors. I, it's, it's fascinating what they do with that thing on here. And it came out in 1969. And you know, they they, they have the people. I have Dylan's notes in here, but they have the uh, the singer as Larry 
LaFower. You can see him right here. But the guy that actually sung this stuff, his name was Robert Spencer, and he's from a group called the Cadillacs. Well, they had the song Gimme Gimme Good Lovin' on there, and it took off. It became this hit. And suddenly they go, oh, crap, man. We don't, uh, we don't really have a band. So they had to create their own band, and they sent them out. And that's the pictures on here. It's these guys that they hired to be, you are now the crazy elephants. So they had to go out and tour this thing. One album, one album only, the crazy elephants. But that is a song that's meant a lot to me. And I've looked at it for years. It's my very first song. It's off Bell Records. Why? And so I got it. Thank you, Dale. I appreciate it. He has sent me some other stuff, and when I, um, you know, as I listen to it, I'll be showing it. All right, uh, here's one, and I got this. This was a VCLT a while back from Chris from First Pressing Goodness. Thank you, Chris. He sent me this, the Shirelles, and a really nice album. This one, um, Everett Greatest Hits. You know, they were. Yeah, you know, actually they formed in 1957. There was a high school music contest. You know, think of it in the 50s. There's so many of these music contests and bands were formed from that. Well, this was one of the very first girl groups. In fact, they called them, um, they, this was labeled as naive sc school girl, as a naive school girl music. And of course the big one, Will You Love Me Tomorrow? We have Soldier Boy on here. Uh, dedicated to the one I love just a really important album and you know they, they recorded up to 63 and then they broke up and you know they you know got better you know together again at times you know to do concerts and stuff but uh, the Shirelles great listen so I did gimme gimme good love we know that that's one I like another song I really like was just give me some loving it really seems to me that obviously I, I don't get a lot of loving, does it? I mean, I got one. I needed to get give me give me good loving. Now I need to get give me some loving. I just the cat seems to want to give it to me. All right. Uh, yeah, I know I own no Spencer Davis group in vinyl, and so this this was neat to find. Off a wrist up, and. Uh, so I was uh, in the wilds of West Virginia, of course, and there it was, and I found it, and it was a Spencer Davis. Now, you know, these guys formed in 63, this album's from 67, and, and I just find it fascinating how, uh, you know, I think it was, was it in Birmingham, Bur Birmingham, England, they formed, but uh, Spencer Davis found this 14-year-old guy, you know, Stevie Winwood, 14 years old, and he had that soulful voice at 14. Wouldn't you think the voice would be cracking, you know, and just not sounding right, but it wasn't. And so they formed that group, and they lasted until 67, and then uh, Stevie Winwood went into traffic. Uh, but Chris Blackwell, he started that, you know, his, his uh, label Island signed him brought them on so it's one of you know islands first you know people they brought on uh, this one's from United Artists so you know some of the hits it doesn't have all of the hits but it does have give me some loving which is a favorite love the Blues Brothers version of it all right blind buy you know if you're gonna do a blind buy you could buy one album why not buy two from that group you know if, if you go blind go big blind just don't go small blind I bought these new, but I like them. And this is called the um, All Them Witches. See that? All Them Witches. So I bought this one here, and this was Dying Surfer Meets His Maker. And the other one is right here. And this one was called um, Lightning at the Door lightning at the door so these guys all them witches they come out of Nashville Tennessee and they were formed in uh, 2012 and it's kind of I guess you could call it stoner rock there's some blues rock in it and some hard rock it has what I call that groove in there where you just get this bass and guitar and it's just kind of keeps this monotonous thing going it's just this great groove you know um you know and that i you know and andrew tales from the cream will talk about that a lot and you know endless boogie you know was an album i 
got because of him, because it had this kind of groove, this stone or rock groove going on. So, you know, that's what these have. And if I had a choice between here dying, the dying surfer one and lightning at the door, I definitely would take dying surfer. I really like this one. Dying Surf was done in 2015, and this one was done in 2013. I believe they've had about uh, five different albums now. They did this one in six days. They went out to a cabin in Tennessee, and they just sit up in this cabin, and they knocked out this album in six days. It's really neat music on there. It's a gatefold. Very, very neat music. So I was a blind buy. This one came with a 45. It's off New West Records on there. So all them witches. Check it out. You can find, uh, you go on YouTube, they have a video out there. It's really kind of creepy and spooky. Uh, but again, you know, they had, it's, it's a darker music on there. But it's just this nice, this droning groove. And it's just, oh, so much fun on there. So that was my you're going to blind buy, go two. Why go one? Glad I didn't hate them, huh? That would have been a waste of money. Woo! All right, Andy Borders. Mr. Andy Borders. Check out his channel. He recommended this, Slint. And he's posted a number of times, and everyone else is posting it. And I felt I was kind of the only guy in the world that hadn't listened to it. Absolutely zero kind of label. Don't you miss labels? Everyone now just puts black or some picture and you don't have that cool label. Now, I'm sure they think they're doing great, but that label is kind of fun, isn't it? And James Griffith schooled me for months to get me to show a label. Now, there's no labels to show. All right, but that, um, I digress. So Slint, this is Spiderland, and Slint came out of Louisville, Kentucky back in 1986. And they're kind of Post rock, math rock. I mean, math rock just kind of fascinates me, just the sound, math and rock. And it's like, wow, okay. Um, you know, when I think of math, here's a. And when I was in seventh grade, I was in algebra. That has nothing to do with music, of course. And, and, my, and my teacher, Mr. Grizzler, this is Central City, Nebraska, by the way, he uh, gave us a 50 question true false test. 50 questions, true and false. I missed every one of them. Seriously, I missed every one. He, in fact, in class, brought that up. He goes, this really is statistically impossible. But Steve missed every single question, and that's just the most amazing thing. <laughs> it was. I mean, I sat there and I thought about it. I tried to think about every freaking one. 50 true-false questions. Math, algebra, I missed every one of them. I got to see out class. I mean, you know. I kind of got algebra. I don't know what was going on that day, but that's probably the, my greatest achievement, my greatest scholastic achievement, to miss 50 true-false questions and get a perfect zero. So, all right. But the album. So these guys, their, their very first concert, their first concert, they went to a Unitarian church, and they were going to perform there. And the name of the band was Small Tight, Small Tight Dirty Tufts of Hair. That's what they call themselves, small tights, dirty tufts of hair. Can you imagine? And ladies and gentlemen, today, for your listening pleasure, singing Amazing Grace in our church, small tight, dirty tufts of hair. After two songs, they had cleared the church out. Yep, there we go, the beginning of Slint. And luckily they did change their name on there. So, you know, this was recorded, uh, when they did this, this was their second album there. And their first one was called Tweezer, I believe. And I've ordered that one. Hasn't come in. Amazon hasn't sent me anything crazy on that one yet. Uh, so this one was recorded in just a couple days. They didn't even rehearse on this. They went in, one, two takes, that was it. There it is. We're done. We're going. Uh, their lead singer, um, McManon, Mc McManon, I believe was his name. He had been in a terrible auto accident and then actually thought he died, but uh, he came out of his coma. But he was really depressed. After they did this album, he checked himself into a mental institution. I mean, his depression was that bad. 
so you know they, they uh, split but they've formed since then several different times to make music as a group but uh, there it is so this is dark you know it kind of changed hardcore punk you know you think in 86 hardcore punk was really really big these guys came with this it's really dark music uh, and, but it's not nearly as guitar driven they're in there and it's you know it definitely has that kind of the punk but it's more the post punk so interesting album thank you Andy Borders uh, this was uh, actually Andrew Tales from the Crate he had turned me on to the more the, the Murder City Devils so this is their second one this is Broken Bottles Empty Hearts and this one came out in 1998 this group formed in 96 and this was their second album. On this album, you know, I, you know, Aunt, uh, Aunt Andrew did a whole thing about these. The first album was, you know, really great, kind of a garage rock, and it is. It's more garage rock. Some might call it horror rock. On the second album, they added in the Oregon, and it really sounds beautiful in there. Really works well with the group. So a, net, a really neat find I found out in. West Virginia. Uh, these guys broke up, uh, they went from 96 to 2001, broke up, but then they got together in 2006 again and still make the music. Uh, another blind buy. Tin Iron. Tin Iron. Uh, they're from Africa. How about that? All right, they're from Africa. Uh, Tin R. Tin R.I. Win. Tin R.Y. Win. This is made in uh, 2017. It's their seventh album. They actually, they started, they, they won a Grammy. They started making albums in 2001, but this group started back in 1979. Uh, the leader of the group, his name was uh, Ibram, Ibram Alabib. Alabib. Uh, he was born in 59. When he was four years old, Rebels came to his village and killed his father right in front of him. I mean, wow, talk about traumatic. Then he was, um, he watched as he was young, uh, he watched a movie. It was an American Western, but a guy had a guitar. That's the first he saw the guitar and he loved it. So he went out and he got a can and a stick and he took some uh, cables from. Um, from bike brakes, so he took bike brake cables. Can you imagine the bike he took that off and the person didn't know it the next day and they're just riding away and hitting a busy intersection to go for the brakes? It's, Damn you, Ibram! Damn you, Ibram! No brakes! But, uh, so he made a guitar. Eventually someone else gave him another guitar on there. Um, and, and this is, this cost, this, they're from the Sahara, uh, actually in northern Mali. But, you know, there's all this war and that going on. So they went to, uh, over to Algeria. They went to Libya. Actually, Muammar Gaddafi. If you remember Gaddafi, right, out of Libya. This guy went, uh, him and his group went with them. He was making a bunch of rebel fighters. And so these guys signed up with Gaddafi and they went in and uh, they were trained uh, uh, in, uh, to, be, to be rebel fighters for him. Well, eventually that left their country, you know, found peace, and they're back there again. So, I mean, it's just, it's it's African music, and it's a beautiful groove to it. It really sounds great. It just has this wonderful sound. There's rock in here. I mean, his influences was Elvis Presley, uh, James Brown, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, Santana. All those are his influences. So you listen to the thing. There's this bass going on in there. Uh, and just the percussion it's really really it is a it's a classic album five-star album can't recommend it enough I bought this Bill Evans interplay this is from 1963 that's a repress obviously uh, really nice you know Bill Evans was born in 29 died in 1980 you know, when he went to college, he had a scholarship for the flute. How about the jazz flute? Uh, but he found his deal was the piano. But, you know, he played violin too, probably other instruments, but he went to college to play flute. Well, after college, you know, the Korean War started in 1950, and, you know, he was in the Army. 
and he was in the army for three years. Whatever happened, he had a really traumatic episode, something, and he had nightmares for many, many years. And they say that's really what got him into heroin and everything. It's the nightmares from being in the army. I'm not quite sure what they were. Well, he got out, began gigging and doing anything, but once he really teamed up with Miles Davis, you know, he really took off. Uh, now, generally, Bill Evans had a trio. This wasn't a case on this one, so this was in 63. And here he hooked up with um, Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, Jim Hall on guitar. Now, that was weird. Everyone did sax, right? This is 63. He always had a sax player. He had a guitar. He used Jim Hall on guitar on this. Uh, then he had Percy Heath on bass and Philly Joe Jones on drums. Really neat. It's kind of like being in a little smoky lounge there, just, you know, kind of grooving away to it. Nice find. Really inexpensive on Amazon. This is like one of those $12 records you can find on Amazon. Uh, I picked up this one, Alejandro Escovedo. Didn't know it. Another blind buy. It was a good price on there. Uh, he came up from San Antonio. A guy born 1959 on here. Uh, this is more alt country. He does, you know, he can do, um, you know, like roots rock and stuff. This is more of an alt country album from him on there. Uh, and it's called 13 Years to Repress. It originally came out in 1994. The guy's still making music out there. If you like alt country, you probably enjoy this thing. Three left, and then we're done here. And I'm going to go through these quick. I, you know, I've been buying Elton John on vinyl. I've had everything on CD through the 70s into some of the 80s, and I kind of stopped. But I did pick up his second album, Elton John. His third album, Tumbleweed Connection. And then his fourth album, Madman Across the Water. So this is second album. His first album, Empty Skies, eh, you know, it did okay. This thing was a five star, all right? This was a uh, one of those monumental albums on there. And it had Border Song on there and Our Song on this thing. This put him into the stratosphere, took him off. Then he came out with this, he did Tumbleweed Connection. And Tumbleweed Connection, can you see that? I know I got a lot of plastic over it and the cat's in my way. Uh, just sitting here. So this was a concept album for him. Kind of a loose, loosely based concept album. They didn't have any hits off it, but some people really appreciated this album and for what he did on there. So it became his The Concept Album of the Old West. Then he thought, hey, I'm going to do Prague. Well, this was his foray into it. I mean, I don't know. I really don't hear a lot of prog, but that's kind of what he was trying to do to get into more of that. And this one had the uh, hits Tiny Dancer and Levon. And Levon is one of my absolute favorite Elton John songs. It's such a great story on that, what they're talking about. So really enjoyed that to find it. So again, you know, things I've had on CD, but now I have them in vinyl. Uh, you know, why, why save that money? Why not just spend it on that? But they were inexpensive. All right. That's it. Piles to show. Uh, shout out. You know, last week I went and saw Bill Young, uh, Michigan Record Club. For those of you that watch him, you know, he's battling cancer. He has um, some bone cancer. And it was nice that uh, I was, you know, able to go over there. He's thinning out his, his collection, asked, hey, things I was interested in. A stack of records like this uh, that I have to go through. I have another huge stack I haven't shown yet, but trying not to kill you. I'd like to talk about it. So I uh, do have a lot, but uh, Bill Young says, Hey, do you, Bill Young? I'm going to go see him again today. Uh, you know, he looked better. He's on a new medication and things are looking, you know, he's hoping this is going to be, you know, he's really positive. You know, he's doing the best he can, but he does wear out. So it was really nice to see him. Uh, one other thing I just wanted to, when I talked about Bill Evans, he was on the Riverside label. This was a neat box set I bought uh, a number of years ago. It is a 12 CD box set on Bill Evans. It's every Riverside recording he ever had. So kind of a fun thing. If I was Jamie Cottle, I would open this thing up and show you because he does a fantastic job. Ah, damn it, said fantastic. He does an incredible job at it. <laughs> but um, we're out of time. 
thank you everyone for um, tuning in. There's a lot of contests out there. Take part of it. If you've done Vinyl Tag, give it a try. Again, some people are, it's the very first videos. Cat's here. Cat says hi. Cat says goodbye. He's trying to bite my hand now. So, um, thanks for all you do, and we will talk with you next Sunday morning.